Well, good day, people. It's good to be with you again. Pastor Kevin here bringing your today's daily devotion. We are going to be in James chapter 2. We're going through this series I'm calling the James Shuffle. And today we are going to be in chapter 2, verse 14. And this is our word today. It says this. What good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, be warm and filled, without giving them the things needed for their body, what good is that? So also, faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. Okay. There's a lot of clamor that's occurred over this, specifically this type of the section of James and some of Paul's language about um, about dead works, basically. Uh, And and realistically, you may have heard this before, but they're really not that much at odds. I think what James is really getting at is not that we are saved by works, but we reveal what we believe by our works. We we basically um, are telling the world what we believe by the things that we do. And, and if you really think about it, that's true of just about anything. If you really like pizza and someone comes over your house, let's just say they come over and visit you three times during a month and two of those times you have pizza, you have revealed to them your belief that pizza is good right? <laughs> or maybe it's easy, or maybe it's cheap, or whatever. It's not cheap, actually, pizza. Cheap pizza is cheap pizza, but it's not that cheap. But the point is simple. We reveal, pe- reveal to people what we believe and the things that we like and the things that we're about by the things that we do. And he finishes off the statement with the whole, the funny, that crazy statement about, you know, even, you know, you believe God is one, even like the demons believe that, and they shudder. So the point is, it's not just knowing that something is real. It's actually revealing that that thing is good. Um, I know that that's kind of stepping a little bit beyond this text, but I think that when you when you operate in life, you are telling people around you what is good. So, for example, this can this can point out things that actually might not be good for you. So, for example, um, if someone comes over to your house and visits you three to five times a month, and every single one of those times you are drinking alcohol and getting a little tipsy then you are telling them that alcohol is good, right? Okay, how about this? If someone comes over to visit you uh, three to five times a month and you're never there because you're at work, then maybe you're telling them that work is good. But I'm going to argue in both of those scenarios, the thing that you're pointing out is good is actually has not been good for you and maybe not for your family, right? So I think there is a simple way of looking at this text of just simply saying, our faith, what we believe, the thing that we point our lives toward is perceived through the things that we do. And if our belief doesn't have those things, James Riley says it's dead. It's not really good. It's, it's, it's dead. It doesn't have any value. If I told you every day for the next 10 years that I loved my wife, but I never actually went home to see her during that time. Would you believe me? You shouldn't. You shouldn't. And I have made failures along this line. Sometimes I do work too much. Sometimes my time is not always spent with my family. So I know how it feels to point in the wrong direction with my actions. So that's the word for us today. It's a simple one. It's an easy one. It doesn't take very long. Think about your life. Just how about this? Look at the last two weeks and think about the time you spent. Now, granted, like a lot of our time, we we sleep. We should be getting sleep, right? Sleep is good for you. Um, Oversleep is bad for you, but we're not going to go there. The point is, is look at the things that you have done over the past week. What are the things that you prioritized your time for? What are the actions you took? Um, did any of them cost you anything? That's always a good question to ask. Like, did any of them were any of them like, yeah, I didn't really want to do that, but I knew it was the right thing to do. But those type of things. This is how we point to the watching world around us. Brothers and sisters, this is how they know that there is a king on his throne. Because you start to look like him. You start to choose things that are different. You start to do different things, which point to your faith in something that's beyond yourself. I mean, let's face it. We, we all are kind of born innately with a faith in ourselves, so to speak, right? We don't worry necessarily that we're going to breathe that next breath or anything like that. Um, Now, 
truth is, I believe God gives us that next breath and that next heartbeat and so forth. But the point is, is that um, we are born in kind of a self-centered way. We're born to struggle to life. And what we realize as we become Christians is that our struggle to life has been granted by one and that it's no longer. So when you become a Christian, it's no longer, uh, it's less full of struggle because you recognize you've been granted. It's a gift. You've been uh, given this wonder of life. So now life points through your doing and your actions and your mouth and the things you say. Let's face it. There's been other places in James we've talked about the tongue. Um, but it points to something. And I think what we all should be trying to do is our actions and, and our attitudes even. The things that maybe people don't see should be pointed in the direction of a king on a cross. The one who would sacrifice. The one who would exemplify. The one who would save. The one who would, who would uh, resurrect and bring that same reality to us. Open it up to us. That's super good stuff. That's super good news. And I hope you would lean into that today. So take a look. Take a look at the, your last two weeks. See how your actions, what do your actions really point to? Um, and, and again, it, it, this is not something to go too far down a bad path on. Uh, like, for example, maybe you worked a lot in the last two weeks. Okay. You have to ask yourself, was that work glorifying God? Like, were you doing good work because we are called to work and to put in effort to the, toward the flourishing of humanity? Or was that work going over the edge? Maybe you worked too much and at the loss of something else. Do you see what I'm getting at? So look at your last couple of weeks and uh, pray about it. Pray that God would actually point out to you things that maybe you have gone too far in. Uh, maybe p- have asked the Spirit of the Lord to point you in directions of new actions you should be taking that you have not so far. Okay? Let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for granting us this day. Thank you for your forgiveness and your mercy and your love that we see through your son on a cross, through his life and his death and his resurrection. We are so thankful for all of those things. So through those and through the gift of your spirit, help us to see how we should be acting and how we should not be acting. Let people see our faith by what we do. Let people see what we believe in, what we truly hold dear by those actions we take each and every day, by the things we say, by by our attitudes, all of those things. We love you. We thank you. We need you to empower us to do these things. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, we'll see you next time.